Thanks for watching and today I would like to calculate a cool geometric integral, namely the integral 1 over x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And the idea is, let's use partial fractions for that. And in order to do that, let's factor out the denominator. So x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And I know some people say you can factor out x plus 1 directly, but let me show you the swag way. Because notice you can write this as 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Ooh, but what is that equal to? That's precisely the geometric series. And that's why it's the geometric integral. Namely, this becomes 1 minus x to the fourth over 1 minus x, which is the same thing as x to the fourth minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, this is valid for every x except for 1. But the cool thing is, the factorization I'll write down will be valid for every x. So it's a little bit of cheating, but not that much. Now, notice the numerator can be factored out quite nicely, because x to the fourth minus 1 is just x squared squared minus 1 squared. So this just factors out as x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1 over x minus 1 which is the same thing as x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. So now the bad terms cancel out and you're left with x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So in particular for the fraction we want to write this as 1 over x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So 1 over x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1, that becomes 1 over what we just found. So x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. And in order to partially fractate that, we would like to write this as a over x plus 1. And then plus, so remember not b over x squared plus 1, but bx plus c because this has a uh, degree 2. And then let's put it on the common denominator. So this becomes a times x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times x plus 1 over, again, x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. And then you can uh, factor, you can expand out the numerator as ax squared plus a plus bx squared plus bx plus cx plus c over gibberish, over some junk, again because it's the same thing as the other denominator, and what you're left with if you, you know, group like terms according to their powers, this becomes a plus b x squared plus b plus c x plus a plus c over again the denominator and that becomes 1 over the denominator. In particular comparing uh, the coefficients of x squared what you get is a plus b so there's no x squared here so it is 0. The coefficient of x on the one hand is b plus c on the other hand, there's no none here, so 0. And last but not least, the coefficient, the constant coefficient, is just a plus c, but that's 1. So we get a system of three equations, which is pretty easy to solve, you'll see. So in the end, we get the system again, a plus b equals 0, b plus c equals 0, and a plus c equals 1. But what you can do, either add up all those equations and you get a nice cancellation, or simply solve for a in terms of b, so a is minus b, and c in terms of b, so c is minus b, and then a plus c just becomes minus b minus b, and that's 1, so minus 2b, or not 2b, that is 1, and so b equals minus 1 half, c is minus b, so that's 1 half, and a is minus b, and that's 1 half. So in the end, what we have, 
a is one half, b is minus one half, and then c is, uh, is one half. So what does that tell us about our function? One over x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one, that becomes, so a over x plus one, so one half over x plus one, and then minus b, so minus one half x over x squared plus one, plus one half over x squared plus one, and then last but not least, all you have to do is integrate. So put this beautiful S sign here. And sure, to make black pen, red pen happy, let's put the X here. Okay. All right, and then you just calculate this. So what you get is the following. So antiderivative of one over X plus one, that becomes ln of X plus one. So with this extra one half, for this one, let's guess ln of x squared plus one. But if you use the Chen Lu, you should get a two x. So to turn this into minus one quarter x, you, a minus one half x, you multiply by minus one quarter. And this one, x squared plus one, it becomes arctangent. So plus one half arctangent of x plus some constant. So surprisingly, this uh, integral involves both ln, ln of x squared plus one and arctangent. How neat is that? Now, of course, this raises a question. We did x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one, but what if we just did x squared plus x plus one? What would happen here? Well, let's do this. Now, before we end, I would like to solve a related equation, because what if we just did the integral of one over x squared plus x plus one dx? In fact, this is what motivated me to do this video. And it turns out the technique for solving this is completely different, because here what you do, you have to complete the square. So if you complete the square, this becomes one over x plus one half squared, because two times x times one half, that becomes x. And because we added one half, we have to subtract one half squared, which is one quarter, but we still have this plus one, the x. And what this becomes is just the integral of one over x plus one half squared plus three quarters dx. Now we just need to factor out three quarters from that denominator. So one over three quarters times four thirds x plus one half squared plus one dx. Now, if you divide by three quarters, it's like multiplying by four thirds. So four thirds, integral of one over. Now, if you want to put this four thirds inside, you have to take square roots. So this becomes two over square root of three x plus two over square root of three times one half squared plus one dx. And the nice thing is this uh, two cancels out and what you're left with is four thirds times the integral of one over two x plus one over square root of three squared plus one dx. And then you can use a u substitution. If you want, you can use u equals two x plus one over square root of three, and then I think du is two over square root of three dx, so dx is a reciprocal of that, or you just do it directly, this becomes four thirds, and then square root of three over two, and then arctangent of two x plus one over square root of three, 
plus a constant, which then just simplifies to, so 4 over 2, that is 2, square root of 3 over 3, that becomes square root of 3, so this just becomes 2 over square root of 3. Square root of 2, of arctangent of this. I mean, isn't this surprising? How come for the Q part we had a bunch of, um, what's it called? How come for the Q part we had a bunch of ln's and arctangents, but here we have weird arctangents and square root of roots? All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.